We're studying the book of Exodus. And we're about to come to the place where there, it is the battle of the gods. The battle of the gods. And it's... Uh, It's quite a battle, except the real God of heaven is, is the powerful, true, real God. We are uh, on page 450 in the book, The Commentary on the Old Testament by Kyle and DeLeach, the Pentateuch. It starts there and he starts talking about the battle of the gods. Now, when Moses was rescued out of the Nile River, do you remember what was going on? Pharaoh's daughter had gone down there and she had, uh, was worshipping the river and bathing in the cleansing, purifying, divine waters of the Nile River. Now, What's going to happen now is that first, one of the first things, now, we know that when Moses and Aaron went into Pharaoh's palace, according to the book of Jasher, the first miracle they did in Pharaoh's palace was what? Do you remember? They threw the rod down. They threw the rod down, but what did they do before they threw the rod down? They went by the two lions that were guarding Pharaoh's home, and they turned them into puppy dogs. Oh. And they just became just little lap dogs. And they came in there just hopping around everything. And these, these lions were, you could not pass those lions, but so they tamed the lions. And then they went in there and they threw the rod down. Aaron threw his rod down and it became a Leviathan. dragon. A leviathan. Not a snake, not a serpent, but a leviathan. A great dragon. Fire-breathing dragon. The word Tanin is not Nahash here, but but Tanin. And that fire-breathing dragon, uh, Janus and Jambres threw their rods down, and they became fire-breathing dragons, created by Satan. But God's dragon ate them and swallowed them up. Now we're going to go to the seventeenth verse of the seventh chapter. And I'll read it to you from Hebrew to begin with, just to let you hear what it sounds like. Ko Amer Hadavar, Bagat, Bazot, that is, Tida Ki Ani, Hadavar, Hine, Anoki, Make, Ba Matek, Asher, Biadi, Al Hamaim, Asher, Biar, we nafi ku lidom. And in this manner, says Jehovah. Now I put down the word Havavar there because we don't know how to say the word Jehovah. So I say Havavar, which means the word. Now in the New Testament, in John 1 and 1, it says, N R K and Ho Logos. In beginning, kept on being the word. Okay? The word. That's Hebraism there. And so here we have this Jehovah, and we don't pronounce it because we don't know how, but we'll just call him Havavar, the Word. In this, you shall know, you shall keep on knowing, that I, Jehovah, behold, I am about to be striking with a rod, now, where was the power? Where was the power for all the miracles? The rod. In the rod. In, in Aaron's rod, or Moses' rod, or Adam's rod, or God's rod. We know, according to the Bush of Joshua, it had been passed down. And that rod was in Jethro's garden out there, and no one could put it out of the ground, except when Moses come by, he just pulls it up, like the sword and the stone. And he went up there and on Mount Sinai, God told him to throw the rod down and it became a serpent. And the hosh. 
But when they throw it down in Pharaoh's house, it became a dragon. More powerful, outstanding, beyond any, you know, a serpent is basically the same shape as a rod. But a dragon is a whole different story. Now, that's a gigantic miracle. Now, he said, I'm going to uh, strike, I'll be striking with a rod, which is in your hand. God's going to strike through the rod upon the waters, which are in the river, and they shall be turned to blood. Lidam is what it is. Unto or like blood. And they shall be turned like blood. Now, the river is a god, isn't it? The Nile River is a god. Now he's going to strike the Nile River. Now, they did have red tides. Remember Maryland when we used to go out in the ocean, sometimes there was red tide. Yeah. What they call red tide. The Nile did have a red tide, which is algae and everything, but not this in this immense way. God took some natural things and absolutely exaggerated them beyond doubt that it had become a miracle, a sign. We had daga, Ashir Bayor, Tamut, Abash, and the fish. We had dog, the dog. The word dog in Hebrew is fish. Dagon was the fish god, okay? Dagon, dog. And the fish, we had the gall, which in the river, each one of these fish, they're, they're all called feminine, whether they're masculine or feminine, because they multiply greatly. Fish greatly multiply. And she shall die and keep on dying and shall stink the river. Now, I'm going to make this river, which are purifying waters, into a cesspool mm -hmm. and a graveyard. Now, when the waters are turned into blood, the fish are going to die. Mm -hmm. Up here at Mono Lake, not too far from here, about probably 80 miles, 70 miles from here maybe, uh, there are no fish in that lake because it's, it's heavy sailing. But there are other animals in there. And they're what we call uh, uh, saltwater shrimp, brine shrimp. The Indians used to come all the way out here from the, from the east coast and travel on the roads, the highways of the plains, and come out here and do trading, and they love those brine shrimp, and they take and trade for them. So now this river, all the natural habitat of their life, and all the fish, what they were eating, and all of the other delicacies that grew by the edge of the Nile River is all going to die. And the river god is going to be helpless. The river god will be helpless in the power of God. And God shall, the battle of the gods, the first battle is that God of heaven is stronger than the Nile River that has given them life for millennia. And the river and they shall become weary, the Egyptians. The Egyptians shall become weary. They'll be worn out. Worn out. To drinking the water. They'll be worn out. They won't be able to drink their water. From the river. Remember, cleanliness was an absolute necessity for the Egyptians. They took baths every day, sometimes twice a day. They shaved their bodies. They shaved their faces. They were very clean. And now, the water that cleansed them is going to be their enemy. It won't cleanse them. It'll make them dirtier. We just went down to Old River, our other old place down there. And the well water down there is uh, not good. <laughs> Let's put it that way. You go in there and try to take a shower, and the soap won't even lather at all, and the water comes out of there, it smells like iron, just like old rusty pipes. And I, 
am always ready to come back home up here and take a shower in this clean water. Well, the water there, the Nile River, was terrible. It has now become a stink hole. It says, And the fish, we had to go, which are in the river, they shall die. And the river, he shall stink. The river, he shall stink. And they shall become weary, the Egyptians, from drinking the waters. They're going to try to strain the waters. They're going to go out. You know, when you're real close to a big river, you can dig. Down here, our creek right down here, I went out down there with an the auger, and I drilled a hole about six feet away from that creek, and water come up. The water level is real high there, and the water came up, and I planted my trees there in the water. And so they got water all the time. I don't have to water those trees at all. Now, on the Nile River, it's the same way. Here we have all this marshland around here, around the delta of the Nile, and they're out there digging holes, trying to get clean water, but in the holes, it's also bloody water. They're just wearing themselves, digging holes, digging holes, digging holes, trying to get a, a, a clear drink of water. I remember a long time ago reading a book about Colonel Baker, when he went into what is now Bakersfield. That it was a great big old swamp land up there. Swamp land all over the place, but the swamp land stunk and it was full of malaria. Well, full of mosquitoes and malaria. And he came upon the valley and he said, water, water, water everywhere, but not a single drink. Water, water, water everywhere, but not a single cup of water. They were drinking water that was full of tadpoles or little wigglies. And of course that wasn't good for you. All the way up to the Tachabee, well they went up into the Tachabees. And they got up there and they started digging holes up there. And some of that was a swamp land. And when they dig holes and here it come out, there would be wigglies in that also. Good flowing spring water is life-giving. The Nile River had been a life-giving waters, waters of life, but now the waters of death. Wayomer Halavar El Moshe Imor El Aharon Ka Matika Unita Yodika Al Meme Metraim El Naharotam El Yaarim We all Aga Mehem, we all call Mikwe, Me Mehem, we Yeyu Dom, we Haya Dom, we call Eretz Mitzrayim, Yuba Etrim, Yuba Abedim. And he said and kept on saying Jehovah or Hadavar, unto Moses, Moshe. Remember what Moses means? To draw out. Means to rescue, or to draw out. And uh, keep on saying this. This is what you keep on saying unto Aaron. Now remember, Aaron was going to be a prophet, and Moses was going to be like God. Now you keep on telling this, Moses, you keep on telling this unto Aaron, El Haharon. Take your staff, actually God's staff, and you stretch out your hand, El Meme, upon the waters. Me, me in Hebrew, or Mayim means waters. You stretch your hand upon El, that preposition there, upon the waters of Egypt, upon Naharotam upon their rivers, streams. Every stream would turn to blood. 
Every little spring coming out from here and there and all of the tributaries to the Nile would turn to blood. There are underground springs in this large river. You go up here and sometimes uh, these creeks will go down there and they get really this small and you go down another mile or so and they're bigger and they've got a bigger spring because there's tributaries all along, springs coming out of the ground you don't even know about. Well, there were many streams in these rivers, Naharaton, underground springs, flowing wells, deep underground springs that were flowing up from the bottom of the river that you don't even know about. In the Sea of Galilee, when the Jews uh, got back into the land, they went into the Sea of Galilee and, uh, and uh, the Dead Sea, and Sharon, I know you've been to the Dead Sea, surely. That water is really, really saline. It is really heavy salt and minerals in that, in that water in the Dead Sea. Nothing can grow in there. You can go out there and just get your bathing suit on and jump out there and lay on top of the waters. The waters are so heavy that you lay upon the waters. They're solid almost, so to speak. Now, the waters coming from the Sea of Galilee would carry water to them. Now, the Sea of Galilee is below sea level, and the Mediterranean Sea is out there. And here it's several hundred feet below sea level. You can fly, fly a jet airplane all the way from the Dead Sea, all the way up to the Sea of Galilee, and fly that airplane under sea level, below sea level. Now, the Sea of Galilee had saltwater springs coming up from the bottom of it. And the Jewish people, when they went there, and they went out and they sent skid divers down, in some places it's 600 feet deep, the Sea of Galilee is, and they sent exploration things, they went down there, and then they, they cemented off those springs of water. That was saltwater springs so the water could be used for irrigation all along the, the Jordan River. Now, all of the tributaries coming into the Nile River have now become blood, bloody water. There was a lead tie many times, but the red tie only affected the Nile River itself, not the tributaries. There was red tide many times in the Nile River in the past for hundreds of years, but never through those springs coming in to the Nile River was it red tide. Fresh water always went in there and they could always go out there and dig a hole out there away from the river and get fresh water, but not this time. The deity of the Nile River was struck dead. God conquered the deity of the Nile River. Now, the word Mitzrayim means the land of red mud and canal banks, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, it's going to be a land of red water and canal banks. It was the irrigated land. And this blood will be over their canals and over their reservoirs, their pools, and over every collection of their waters, every tributary, every little pond is going to be full of blood. If that happened here in Fish Lake Valley, the creek that comes by our house here is Chattavich Creek, Middle Creek, and Davis Creek. Now, the miracle that was performed here would turn every one of those tributaries into a red tide or bloody water. Now this river, creek that we have here goes down to the Arlemont Ranch and on Arlemont Ranch there's two great big pools down there that they, they were lakes there at one time but they, made, they deepened them and they, and they blocked them up and then they would irrigate their farmland, 2,000 acres with those creeks with those ponds or pools or reservoirs. 
Now, the miracle like we have here will turn all of that water into blood. And all the collection of the waters, they shall become for themselves blood. Third person masculine nice prove cow juicif. Juicif means it's middle voice. It shall happen. The rivers by themselves will turn to blood. And uh, he shall become blood in all the land of Egypt. Now this blood tide, or this red tide, extreme here, was only a foretaste of what would happen to all the gods of Egypt. When the rivers turn to blood, there's going to be a lot of blood shed on that land. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of dead animals, there's going to be a lot of dead people in that land. And in wood, pots and in stone pots their water in the house where you got it like you've got a gallon of water in your house it shall turn to blood you will have no water that does not turn to blood all of it will turn to blood all of it all of your waters shall turn to blood even your arrowhead waters in the freezer or in the refrigerator that is all of this happens Everything turned to blood. And they kept on doing, in this manner, Moses and Aaron, just as he had commanded them, Jehovah, Hathavar, and he lifted up the staff, and he struck the waters, and the staff was the power of God. And the water is the power of their deity. God struck their God. By Yer, in the river, before the eyes of Pharaoh, right down before his eye, Le'ene, before the eyes of Pharaoh and before the eyes of his slaves and his servants, Abadah. And was turned and kept on being turned to all the waters, call Hamayim, Asher Bayar Lidam. All the waters which in river to blood, Lidam. Their God died and he stank like he was dead. You know, when you die, you stink. They have to embalm you and do all kinds of things to keep you from stinking. You go out here in the, in the desert and you run upon a dead jackrabbit or something, you could smell it before you get there. Now their God is going to stink like he's dead because he's been struck by the God of heaven. And the fish, which in the river, by your she died. And kept on dying, had died. And the river he stank, and not they had been able, the Egyptians, to drink. Water, water everywhere, and not a single cup to drink. Just like Colonel Baker said when he came to Baker's water, water everywhere, and not a single drop to drink. In that time, in the 18, middle 1800s, when Colonel Baker came to that uh, swamp that became Baker's Field, they built a hospital there. The hospital was a malaria sanatorium. Now, they had a lot of doctors in Egypt, and a lot of witch doctors, and a lot of magicians. And the Egyptians were not able to drink the water from the river. And he became blood in all the land of Egypt. Verse number 22. 
And they did and kept on being thus the scribes. The, in, the word scribes there, it is a cha tum ne. Cha tum ne. And that word means to engrave. And these were the educated ones. The educated ones in Egypt, they kept on doing the same thing. What they needed to do was turn the water back into water instead of blood. But they were turning water into blood too. Imit imitators. Satan always imitates. And thus the engravers and scribes, the educated elite of Egypt, in their secret arts. If you read the book of Jasher, or not the book of Jasher, but the book of Enoch, and you'll find out that the fallen angels came down and taught women and men how to do secret arts. Secret arts have the power of Satan in them. A demonic power. Now these people here, these... Uh, uh, necromancers, these uh, prophets, whatever you want to call them, false prophets, miracle workers, magicians, and uh, in their secret arts, and their hand was strong, the hand was strong and kept on being strong upon the heart of Pharaoh. And he not he would listen unto them just as he had spoken Jehovah. God said, I'm going to harden his heart. I'm going to let him see all kinds of miracles, but I'm going to harden his heart and he won't let my people go. And finally, after all of these miracles, and I'm going to challenge every God that he has in Egypt, after all this happens, He's going to drive you out, and you're going to get a lot of money to leave. He's going to pay you to leave. Egypt will pay you to leave. Now it says, why you pin? Why you pin? And he turned Pharaoh, and he went unto his house. What does Pharaoh mean? The man in the big house. Okay, I want his big house. And not... Did he direct his heart also to this? This was not going to change his heart at all. We are Peru call Mitzrayim Saviva. And they dug all the Egyptians around about the river. Remember what I told you. They're out here digging these little holes, hoping that water will come in there that's clean water to drink. For not, they were able to drink from the waters of the river. And they were completed seven days after striking the after Jehovah struck the water and the rivers. Chapter 8. Eight and one for one says, And he said and kept on saying, Jehovah unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh. And you shall have said unto him, In this manner, he has said, Jehovah, Hathavar, the word, send away my people that they may serve me. Now, this in the, in the Hebrew Bible, this is actually, uh, in the English Bible is 726, but in the Hebrew Bible it's 8 and verse 1. Okay? And then 8 and verse 2 is 727. So, in the Hebrew Bible, the chapter starts earlier than it does in the English Bible. And if refusing you to send away, behold, I'm about to strike all your territory in frogs. Another Egyptian god, the frog god. 
Father, we thank you for this message. Please use it to touch people's hearts, to see your power, your glory. As we look in the world today, we see Buddha. We see all kinds of cults and isms. We see the worship of Muhammad in all reality. They say they don't worship, but they do. Well, do we see all these things? We see all these false gods around us and help people understand you are the only true God. And you've proved it over and over again to the Egyptians, to the prophets of Baal, and yet people go their own way. I pray that you touch their hearts with your word, ask them to call upon you to save their souls. And Father, thank you for your word. Thank you what it means to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray.